What is going on, sneaker fans? Welcome back to another Sneaker Digest episode. Now, last week, the tour was in Wales uh, for the third longest-running tournament on the sneaker calendar, the Welsh Open, and a tournament sort of deep in history, deep in prestige. Pretty much all of the big players have won this tournament and won it on multiple occasions. Um, until recently, where there's been a bit of a pattern of sort of unexpected players winning. The last three winners of the tournament have been Jordan Brown, Joe Perry, Rob Milkins. And then this season, we had a, another little bit of an unexpected one um, in Gary Wilson. And we're going to talk about Gary Wilson in depth um, in this video because this week belonged to him. His third ranking title of his career, uh, he won the 2022 Scottish Open. He then defended that last December and now he's gone to Wales and, he, and he's won a third. And he's he's sort of in the mould of a, maybe like a Stuart Bingham, a Barry Hawkins, a player that sort of waited until sort of the twilight of their career before really finding this kind of form, this kind of level. You know, Gary's 38 years old now. He'll turn 39 this summer. Um, and from nowhere, he's gone from that that term that's used for a lot of players, journeyman, um, and then broken into the top 16 and three ranking titles it is a heck of an achievement. And uh, we're going to break that down in this video. And really to underline just how good a statistic three ranking titles is on your CV. He's now won more than Matthew Stevens, Joe Perry, Anthony McGill, Graham Dot. He's on the same amount as ranking titles as Marco Fu, the late great Paul Hunter, James Watano, Ricky Walden. And he's only one behind the likes of Barry Hawkins, Ryan Day, and the current world champion, Luke Brassell. He's only the only other player, other than O'Sullivan and Judd Trump, to win multiple titles this season. And by doing so, he has launched himself to 12th on the current rankings, the live ranking list. And he's now 10th on the Race to the Crucible ranking list. So he's pretty much guaranteed to be a seed for the world championship a place where he, of course, reached the semi-finals before, back in the year that Judge Trump picked up the title. Um, and then you can even go on top of this. He's got himself to fourth on the one-year list, so he's all but confirmed himself to be in the Tour Championships as well as the Players' Championships. And he's also thrown himself into to the mix uh, for a spot at the inaugural tournament out in Saudi Arabia next month as well. So just by winning the tournament, he got himself 80 grand. But... There's so many doors that's opened up by winning the tournament as well. So he's put himself in a great position to earn, to earn even more money before the end of the season. And finally, if we just look at his route to the final last week, um, there was the added benefit of not having to deal with the likes of O'Sullivan or Trump, who've won eight titles between them this season as they both pulled out of the tournament last minute. But Gary still had to beat some very impressive players. Um, he beat Jack Lazowski, Rob Milkins, Anthony McGill, and then John Higgins to make to the final, which is a tough route by anyone's standards. Um, and his semi-final against Higgins was just about as good as someone can play. Um, he missed a 14th red when going for a maximum in the first frame, but then when he made the maximum in the very next frame, uh, which was the fifth 147 of his career, and that moved him level with Mark Selby, Neil Robertson, Kyron Wilson and Tom Ford on the all-time maximum break list. So, you know, very good company there. And just his overall standard in that semi-final was incredible. He went 5-1 up. John Higgins started to come back at him. Uh, but he showed his, you know, real grit and determination to get over the line and win 6-4. Um, you know, looking at the final, the final itself in truth wasn't the best of qualities. But... Just the more experience he had over Martin O'Donnell told in the end. Uh, a quick word for Martin O'Donnell too, making his first ever final. And he beat the likes of Marco Fu and the world champion Luca Brassell, who looked to be getting back to somewhere near his best. You know, he had to beat both of those to reach the final. Um, so, you know, it was a standout week for a man who's been a professional for the best part of the last decade. And, you know, he'll be hoping, of course, it's a bit of a springboard for him to push on and hopefully have more weeks like that in the future. But it was also a disappointing week uh, for the players that are in the thick of it when it comes to the race of the Crucible. Uh, players like Neil Robertson, Barry Hawkins, Hussein Fafai, David Gilbert, Stuart Bingham, 
all of those guys failed to make any impression at a tournament last week. And there are going to be some big hitters going into the qualifiers. I mean, most of these guys won't be at the Players' Championships or the Tour Championships, which leaves them with only the World Open to get ranking points from. And winning that might not even be enough for players who are sort of looking at that list 25th or below. Um, and, you know, from, from my standpoint, I've basically resigned to the fact that Neil will be at the qualifiers, which is just not a place that any of these guys are going to want to be. But look, that, that's an issue that all of those players are going to have to face in the coming weeks and months. Uh, for now, all commendations go to Gary Wilson on what was a fantastic tournament, as I say. Really impressive, particularly the semi-final. Um, he's really elevating his game. He's really elevating his CV. And look, at, at, at this point, you kind of have to start looking at him as a potential dark horse. Um, whether you put him into the bracket as a dark horse for the World Championship, I'm not too sure. Um, but, you know, he's no longer an outsider. You know, he's a dark horse. And, and for a lot of tournaments, he's now going to be a, a strong contender. You know, you can't win two tournaments in the same season and be overlooked. Um, but yeah, he'll be back this week for the Players' Championship, which is starting tonight. Judd Trump will be back. Ronnie O'Sullivan, as far as I'm aware, will be back as well. And I'll be back next week to review it. Um, so enjoy this week, and I'll be back next Monday to see who wins the Players' Championships. But until then, take care, and I'll see you then.